What's up guys, welcome back to Stoffer Garage. Today's video is going to be a first for my channel. It is going to be a full exterior and interior detail of our Range Rover Sport Supercharged version, which it needs to be done. And if you guys are new and you like these sort of videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and turn on notifications because this is gonna be one of many full exterior and interior details that are gonna be on my channel. So without further ado, let's rock and roll. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna start with the engine bay. It's just gonna be a light clean because you guys could tell probably from the video clips, it's really not that dirty. And then for the wheels, we're gonna start with the front left and kind of work our way around. And then we're gonna also get the exhaust tips as well. And then we're gonna follow it up with the foam cannon and wash it off with the two bucket method, which we'll go into more detail when we get to that step. Once the car is dry, then we'll be pulling it inside to then start on the interior, do the vacuuming and go through the whole steps and process for that. But for right now, let's go ahead and get started on the engine, work our way on the exterior of the car, and then we'll get into the car, inside of the car, once we can bring it inside. And hopefully this rain lets up because it's gonna be a little bit of a tough job to film when it's raining. So go ahead and pull out your table, pull out your roller cart, whatever you put all your products on, get those all pulled out and get ready for the rest of the detail. I have a bucket that's specific for wheels and tires and for the engine and for the exhaust as well. And I'm using specific tools for those different parts of the vehicle. So that way I'm not using them on the paint and causing any scratching or marring because usually those areas are a lot dirtier than the paint itself. So for the engine bay, I'm using a pressure washer to wash off the door jams, get any leaves or dirt that is kind of caked on that comes off easily, spray off those jams, spray underneath the hood, and then focus on an all-purpose cleaner and a soft bristle brush to agitate the dirt that is in those different areas that are harder to reach, and then rinsing those off with a pressure washer. I like to do the engine bay first to get the dirt off the fenders and underneath the hood before I actually start washing the outside of the paint. That way all that dirt doesn't kind of start leaking down as you're washing the car and you're not introducing any dirt to that surface after you've already washed it and cleaned it in the first place. For the larger areas of the engine bay, I just have my wash mitt. This is an older wash mitt and that's kind of why I save it for the wheels and the engine. So I'm using that to kind of wash the edges and then rinse it off with my pressure washer. So for the wheels, I like to initially spray them off and then spray off the inside of the wheel wells because that is an area that a lot of people neglect, but there is a lot of dirt in there and it's just a little extra touch that elevates your detail afterwards. I have several different brushes that I use. I have a longer bristle brush that is actually bendable, and I use that to get behind the spokes, get behind the brakes. And in this particular car, the Brembo calipers are pretty big, and it does fit in those areas to get those calipers clean, get the inside of the wheel drums clean. And then I have a smaller bristle brush that I use for those lug nut areas that are harder to get to and for the caliper bolts and things like that. Now, after I've done all of the scrubbing of the wheel, I like to rinse it off and then apply my Iron X, which Iron X is a newer product for me that I've actually found to be extremely helpful with getting that last little bit of grime and iron off of the wheels. And you can see the color change, which actually helps tell you if it's working or not. All right, now for the paint of the vehicle, I do follow the two bucket methods, which is two different buckets with grit guards, and then I do have two wash mitts that I use specifically for the outside of the car if I need to. Typically what happens is a lot of times if you accidentally drop one, I try to just put that one inside and wash it later on, and then I have a backup mitt already in my buckets. It usually helps me out with not having to slow down the process. But the first step with any wash is obviously rinse the car off with your pressure washer and just straight water first, and then I'm using my foam cannon to saturate the paint with just the initial soaping of the vehicle before I use my mitt. Now the foam cannon is one of those things that people question whether or not it's super effective or if it's helpful, it's kind of for show. To be honest, I already have all the tools. I like to use it for fun and it does kind of give it a cool effect. Now, if you're not familiar with the two bucket method, you do have two buckets. One bucket you has your soapy water with a grit guard, and then you have a rinse bucket that is just specifically for rinsing your mitt out after you wash a specific panel of the vehicle. Now, when you wash a car, I always start at the top, and you wanna start with one side of your wash mitt, wash off one section of a panel, and then flip the mitt over and you can do another panel, and then rinse it off in your rinse bucket and wring it out, and then you can put it back into your wash bucket. So that way you're not bringing in any dirt into your clean water bucket as much. 
it does help with cutting down on the dirt and grit that actually gets back onto the paint when you're washing the next panel. One other tip that I do is I have these soft bristle brushes that are boar's hair that I use for any exterior agitation or smaller cracked areas like here on the fender. I used it in the grill. I used it in the different emblems. It helps get into these areas that are really hard to reach with a microfiber mitt with just your finger. Now, like I said, I started at the top. I do work my way down, but I leave the bottom quarter panels, the front bumper and the bottom of the rear bumper to last. And they are usually the dirtiest parts of a vehicle's exterior. And by saving those for last, you're not introducing that dirt onto the rest of the paint. Now when it comes to drying, I'm just using a waffle weave drying towel, and then I have an air compressor as well for some of those different little cracks like the grill in particular here and the emblems on the side. And it does help with getting some of that extra water out. You can use an air compressor on your door handles, your any, any cracks or crevices. It is helpful, but in this case, but the car was already pretty effective at beating off water. Now for my wax coat, like I said, the car is in pretty good condition, but there's always a top layer that you could add to the vehicle just to give that extra shine and luster. And in this case, I'm just using a basic synthetic wax. This one's from Chemical Guys. And the reason why I like to use just a basic synthetic wax is because ceramic coatings and some of these more high-end coatings that you're seeing a lot of, they're not hard to apply, but the prep is super, super high. And to be honest, for the average enthusiast, for the average car person that needs to wash their car has a busy job, has kids, whatever you guys got going on and when you have busy lives. When you have a ceramic coating, there's a certain level of upkeep that has to take place in order to preserve it and keep it lasting as long as it does without marring it. And for me personally, doing a corrective once a year or once every other year, as long as I can keep my wax level up and do this once every other week, once a month, you can usually keep kind of that sealant and that wax on the surface enough that you really don't have that bad of a finish over time. And if you are following two bucket method and you're not driving the car through a car wash, you really don't have that big of an issue with the paint getting scratched up very quickly. Now for the tires, I'm just using a simple tire dressing in my applicator pad to dress the tires after they've been dried off. I'm really, really thrilled with how this turned out. Making white paint look glossy and wet like this is really, really hard to do. And when you get it right, it's amazing. So the paint and exterior is done. It is now time to move to the inside of the car. Uh, and inside we're gonna start with vacuuming and then we're gonna roll through the rest of the interior. I'm just gonna steam the door jams and kind of clean those up. But the majority of the car just needs to kind of be wiped down and kind of cleaned up a little bit because it doesn't have as much dirt as I typically see with some of my details. So but let's go ahead and get started. And like I said, first, start with vacuuming. Now for any detail, I mentioned that the first step is vacuuming. It obviously has to be pulling everything out of the car first and then you can follow with vacuuming. And in this case, this is my wife's car. It has two car seats in it. It has a lot of papers, Starbucks cups, you name it. But after you get everything pulled out of the vehicle, go ahead and move into the vacuuming stage, which get as much out as you can. And I try to do vacuuming first because when you're wiping off the trim panels on the lower door rockers or on the sides, if you have dirt on the carpet already and you're wiping those panels off after you've cleaned them or scrubbed them, you're going to introduce dirt back onto that surface. So that's why I like to do vacuuming first. And then at the very end of the detail, if I need to do a follow-up vacuum or like more of a maintenance vac, that is the time to do it. Now as a nice little effect in the trunk, I've been kind of experimenting and it's just a little added effect is putting different carpet lines into the rear carpet. It's just kind of fun, something to add to it to kind of give people more of a visual like appearance that man, this person really took the time to detail the car. Now, if you guys have seen my other videos, I am a big fan of steam cleaners. So I'm using it to clean around the, all the different door jams in the vehicle, on the trunk, the doors, everywhere. I'm a big fan and big proponent of steam cleaners. They do a really good job at lifting off dirt, kind of just using steam to do the job for you instead of a lot of chemicals. Sing for me, darling, 
So I like to start at the front passenger side door and I use the steam cleaner to clean the door jams around the door itself and then also the car itself. And then I'm following up just with Chemical Guys Silk and Shine to then dress the panels because like I mentioned, the car wasn't extremely dirty and all it needed to do was just get wiped off and kind of dressed up again. And I'll follow this process as I move around the car to the rear passenger, the trunk area, and then all the way to around to the driver's side. Now on the door jam, sometimes you need to use a soft bristle brush to get some of that dirt, but half the time, usually just a clean microfiber towel in your steam cleaner will get the dirt off and allow you to get the rest of it off after the second pass. On the door sills when you first go into the car, that's where using the steam cleaner and bristle brush really does become helpful because you have those different seams and, and, and lines in the plastic that are hard to get to with just a steam cleaner. It helps kind of get that dirt moving a little bit faster. So I like to use Chemical Guys Silk and Shine because it's not really greasy and doesn't really leave any sort of surface like uh, wetness to it like some other products. So I can use it on the seats, I can use it on the steering wheel, I can use it on the pedals without having to worry about it being slippery after the customer gets the car back. So now for the leather seats, I'm just using a product that is more of a conditioner because like I said, they're really not super, super dirty and I'm just trying to preserve them and keep them shining and keep them from cracking over time. So I'm just using a basic conditioner to wipe all the seats down. And even though they're not super dirty, just by using a conditioner and wiping down the panels, you'll actually notice your microfiber will pick up some of that dirt as well, which does kind of help with making an easy way to just kind of do a one-step process on your seats. Now for any interior plastic panels, including the dash here, I am just using the Chemical Guys Silk and Shine to wipe everything down like I mentioned earlier. It really gives it that nice luster and it has that new car smell and it has a UV protecting it to hopefully keep everything from fading over time. So 
So for the windows, grab two clean microfiber towels, and before you start on the window, roll the window down halfway and get that top seam along the edge on the inside and outside. That way when the customer rolls the window down, they're not gonna have that dirty edge at the very top that goes inside the door jamb. And because we've dressed the doors already, just take a clean towel and spray your glass cleaner on that, do the inside, and then move to the outside of that door and work your way around the vehicle doing all the windows that way. And then I like to follow up with a second microfiber towel that is specifically just for kind of cleaning up, wiping it down, making sure there's no streaking or extra fluid that remained on the surface. Also, don't forget your side mirrors, don't forget your rear view mirror inside the car, and also don't forget about the sunroof and the rear inside of your glass on the tailgate. So if you want to know what products I used in the video, please go ahead and check out in the description box below. I have everything linked there for you. Now for the floor mats, I'm just using an all-purpose cleaner and a bristle brush to go ahead and agitate and clean those off, drying it off, and then topping it with the Chemical Guys Silk and Shine. And here are the end results. The car turned out amazing. I love the way that the wax keeps the car shining, especially on a white car. I found this to be one of the best waxes and topper coats that you can use to make a white car look wet. That is really easy to do on a darker color, red or black paint, but on a white car, that's really hard to do to make it really shine like a darker colored car. And when you get it right, it's a really, really cool feeling. And the interior turned out amazing as well. The topper coat I put on there really makes even the carbon fiber panel shine. It makes all of the plastic trim look brand new. It really makes the car look like it just rolled off the factory floor and it turned out great. So if you like today's video, make sure you're subscribed down below, give it a big thumbs up. And then in the comments, I wanna see everybody's cars that they drive. I think it'd be really cool for everyone to list them. So that way we can see what you guys are driving that watch my videos and that will help me figure out what cars you want me to detail next. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.